Hey, good morning guys. It is Monday. We are technically on vacation, but I've come out to do a little pruning of the tomatoes, which are going absolutely wild. So I thought I would just take a moment and share that with you. So the plants have really just gone crazy over the past couple days after we had uh, a couple days of very drenching rain and the um, buckwheat that has gone to flower is coming up very happily and we actually have numerous tomatoes that are started and I am hoping that they will be uh, ready for harvest you know by 4th of July maybe a week after um, but we will oh there they go I'm trying to find my way in the sunlight but yeah they're they're growing happily and I think we're going to have a bumper crop this year. So with tomato pruning, it's very important that you understand where your center stalk is and which tomatoes really should and should not be pruned. I don't like pruning uh, my Roma tomatoes, for instance. This is a Martino Roma, which I also grew from seed. They are considered determinate tomatoes, so they Put everything out at once they already know how many tomatoes they're going to have basically when they grow it's one season for them and that's it so you get one big yield but with an indeterminate tomato that is a heavy producer like the parks whopper they uh they grow wild and they will vine where the determinate tomato stays um a little bit more organized and clumped um which uh, really makes it all that more important that you have it caged and staked properly because it becomes a very squat and heavy rounded plant. Uh, the indeterminate park swapper, which I'll start with here, gets something called runners. And the runners basically grow up out of a notch that is above a, um, a leaf. So it's important that you know where your runner is and where to clip it off because you could potentially cut off your center stake and then you lose your plant. So the, the runner will also have tomatoes and year after year I've pruned off too many runners and it really did affect the uh, amount of yield that we had from each plant. But last year I pruned less and we had an amazing harvest. And I think one of the things is just getting to know what type of uh, and variety of tomato plant you're dealing with and knowing how much to prune and why. So as I uh, start pruning here, I wanna take the opportunity to find a good branch to show you what it is that I'm doing here for those of you who have never pruned tomatoes before. This is obviously a leaf branch and these are considered shade branches and they are, are beneficial to keeping you know everything shaded photosynthesis um, drinking up the sun and so on but this right here is a, a sucker and i may have called it a a runner a moment ago so this is a sucker and if you see it grows up out of the top of the the um the leaf so this is just a matter of getting in there with a good clean pair of pruning shears and I'm taking that branch, that leaf branch and that sucker because it's low to the ground. There's still plenty of um, shade for the flowers that are coming up and as you can see that this is offering us some flowers and they will be tomatoes. Now really each, each leaf represents an opportunity for shade for all of your little flower clusters and you have to be very careful where you prune um, because you don't want to cut off a main branch you don't want to cut off a, a stem these flowers are important these flowers are where your fruit is going to come from so um, I'm getting in here and I very gingerly do the pruning because I like these plants to be nice and big and bushy however when these leaves lay on the ground they um, create an opportunity for uh, nematodes for bacterial infections and 
things that become, become a problem and make the plant sick. So you want to clip them off and get in there and take out an, um, a, an overabundance of density because you want airflow and circulation. Also, too many leaves weigh the plant down and if you get a big storm, there's a greater opportunity that your tomato bushes are going to suffer with wind and rain. So keeping them thinned out and properly pruned allows air circulation, better light filtration, better manageability, and what's very important also is that you can get in there and see if you have an insect infestation. Otherwise, um, you won't be able to see if you have a tomato hornworm or you won't be able to see if you have um, leaf-footed nymphs in here that destroy your plants. So we're gonna get in here and give everything a good pruning today and we'll be set up for a few weeks. But just look at her today. Oh my goodness, again, I get distracted by shiny things. Lettuce, it's very late in the day. We're on vacation, staycation, I should say. John's off for the week. We like to get caught up on stuff. And I, you know, I don't really like to go anywhere anyway. I'm a major introvert. So this is, you know, sanctuary for me when I come back here, even though I often get disheartened by the fact that the birds come and they are absolutely destroying my snow peas and snap peas. Ugh, they did this to me last year, but there's nothing I can do about it. I know they'll repay when they, um, when the corn gets tall enough, they will actually pollinate for us. They're these beautiful little finches and they're just so cute and they live behind my neighbor's shutters. Every year they migrate back here and um, they do their work and then they leave. So while we were on the topic of pruning, I realized that the zucchini already needed to be pruned. So I started to uh, get to work on that. And like a good gardener, I've lost my pruning shears. So as we go on a quest to find the pruning shears, we'll look for look at peppers on the, uh, the adventure back. I think I know where I left them. I snuck back here for a moment to try to get some shade. It's important that you take a break while you're out here working in these conditions and you find a shady spot to just clutch yourself upright your posture uh, it's very easy to pull your back out there they are here goes the these are fiskers gifted to me by our friend Raymond who one day showed up on one of his many adventures off to Costco and he said here you go Lee we bought these for you and that was a couple of years ago a couple of years ago already but wow these were one of the best gifts I've actually ever received. So back to zucchini land. As you can see, they are growing beautifully. Why am I pruning them already? Because this zucchini was reaching out and touching the tomatoes. And that's not something that you want. So I just go back here. Um, you can see these long guys that lay on the ground. They tend to become susceptible to insects and things like the uh, squash bug, which leaves the bore. So I just cut the branch back close, as close to the stalk I can um, so that I'm getting this off of the ground. And we want to leave it so that nothing is really laying. Now, I don't know if you noticed and just how how much attention everyone is paying to what I've been showing, but what do we see? We have a flower on top of that little guy. So he's waiting for his woman to bloom, and then we'll have a real zucchini, because right now that's just a zucchini blossom. It's not an actual zucchini yet. So I will say that for now. Female right there. Yep, it's opening up. There's, there she is. She's wooing him and calling out to him. <laughs> Now, I will show you one more opportunity. See, once they start laying on the ground like this, the opportunistic eaters come. This is not so easy to hold a camera and prune a zucchini bush. So, off we go. Farmer John is behind me collecting like a good husband. A good, a good gardener husband would. So we don't need too much pruning today on these. You don't want to get too happy pruning these plants. 
remember they need these giant leaves this is photosynthesis happening you see how they're reaching up to the sky they're reaching up to the sun as long as they have good movement the plants are not too close together again we have uh, another another blossom down there this is when it gets really exciting because we're going to have zucchinis that are real zucchinis to harvest any time now also the big leaves protect yes so they protect from the sun yes so they prevent scorch there that's where the, the the drinking comes from they take in the moisture in the air they create shade um, these have many many roles in the in the garden life of the zucchini um, but it's important that you keep it healthy just like you would with a healthy haircut you want to cut away the dead you want to cut away anything that's an inv invitation to a bug because they're able to smell rotting decay and they come and they live and they bore so this is when it gets dangerous because the bugs come they bore into a stalk they lay their eggs then you get a grub which is called the vine bore and that becomes the the death to your zucchini plant so it's important that you monitor like right now i see a little bug under the leaf so i'm not really sure what that is but we're going to have a closer look at it and see if he's a friend or foe. We may or may not get rid of him. So we will see. It's very important to monitor every single thing that lands. Now, what are you going to say he is? He is potentially okay. Okay. He flew away. One of the things we're also looking for here is we've already noticed that we have Colorado potato beetles starting to arrive very early in the year. So thanks, Colorado. Yeah, they are big time <laughs> foes to the garden. Hey guys, well, it's like six hours later, I want to say, from the last time we started rolling uh, film today or video. Look, I came from a place where we talked about eight tracks and vinyl records and. I say film as if there's actually film, but I know there's no film. I know, I get it. You don't have to tell me. But anyway, look at this beautiful zucchini flower. Oh my gosh, that is definitely going to open up tomorrow. Look at it. Yay. And that's a female. So we have, oh no, that's actually a male flower. But um, the little females look like they could potentially open tomorrow also. And another big beauty here, and I just love it that we we got a little bit caught up with so many things today. So normally I like to water early in the morning, and if I can't make it by early in the morning, I do get out here before dusk. Sidebar, I never, ever, ever, ever spray the foliage of the tomato plants. Not ever. You're asking for disease if you do that. Um, so I would encourage, no matter what time of the day, you water your garden never spray your tomato leaves so but we we did come out to give a little shade to the lettuce um, patch back there sorry for my fingers we, we just give it a little bit of an umbrella in the afternoon on dry days like this but I was so distracted by the beauty and um, progress of the beautiful zucchini just since this morning when I showed you uh, but I can't help it now. I have to come out and I have to video, not film. I have to video uh, all of the progress. But, you know, just the leaves alone. They're so Jurassic. And uh, the zucchini just, she has such a presence in the garden. Another beautiful flower under there. So tomorrow, Stay tuned for a different video where we'll be coming out and we'll be showing the, uh, the progress of the zucchini open. But right now, I should also mention that I'm being followed. I'm being stalked, okay? I'm being stalked by Farmer John. And we're just not going to wait. We were, we were going to do a big reveal of this. We are so excited. Here is the, what is the word I want to use? The premiere premiere <laughs> first appearance first showing of the very first st strawberries we grew in our green stalk garden light oh my gosh they're so vibrant now my friend Melissa and Aristea you want to grow strawberries look at this 
like I said, we put this in the green stalk vertical garden, uh, I think it was April 21st, um, and they actually, they were bare root. So Melissa, don't think about seed. If you put seed in the ground, it's gonna take you a long time. If you buy bare root, this is what you get. And I have to say, they're really awesome. And they yeah. smell incredible. I wanna eat one it's right like now. It's like strawberry candy. So that's our update for tonight, guys. I'm very excited. Oh, before I, before I let you go, just spend another moment with me of your time, please. I have more beautiful petunias shining in the sun. They're just, they're just eating it up. This is the glory of the day, though. Look at that flower. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely perfect. Now, I could do this all day, every day. I could come out and give you up to the minute updates on everything. And one more thing, I have a new bean. It sprouted. This is a pole bean that my friend Kathy shared with me. I think they're called Kentucky Blue pole beans or something like that. It was Chef Jeff's variety that she bought from the farm stand last year and dried out a few beans and shared some with me. So, and real quick, I did do all of the pruning today and I'm giving you a fast forward because my videos are getting so long and the last thing I want to do is have anybody fast forward through the videos to see what's going on. But look at the tomatoes already. Can you even believe it? So I gave these guys, here's some more, a lot of, uh, a lot of room to grow today. I did a lot of heavy pruning. Um, so everything can really breathe now and these tomatoes I'll be able to keep a better a better eye on them oh my goodness so exciting so anyway guys we will be closing this vlog for the day and stay uh, stay with us we'll be posting probably several times a week now because this is when we're going to get our greatest reward so Farmer John here is just smitten with everything that he sees. So have a great night, guys. Hopefully, uh